Hey guys, today I want to take a look at a pretty interesting 2024 electoral map. That would be if Donald Trump were to run as a third party candidate without the Republicans. And this really is not too unlikely as many of the establishment Republicans, even Mitch McConnell, they do not want Trump in the party. And, you know, Mitch McConnell wants to get rid of Trump. He, Mitch McConnell wants Trump to be impeached, but he's not going to vote for impeachment if he does not think it's going to pass. So Mitch McConnell, you know, and the establishment Republicans, they are against Trump right now. Just like, you know, Kevin McCarthy, I mean, criticized Trump. He, you know, said Trump was the sole reason for the attack on the Capitol, but then he walked his words back because that's what he does. So um, this is just a kind of like based off the numbers because there is a new poll from the Hill that shows that 64% of GOP voters, so 64% of Republicans would join a third party made by Trump, which means that Trump has almost two thirds of the support from the Republican Party, and not just two thirds of support, two thirds of strong support. I'm sure there are some who oppose Trump might even vote for him if they oppose a third party, but they might even vote for Trump on the presidential level. So I've put in Nikki Haley for the Republicans because she is just the most generic Republican. Republican right now that has a chance of winning the nomination, Trump as a third party, and then Joe Biden, we're going to assume that he's going to be running for a second term. So before we get started, make sure you join my Discord server if you have not, the link to which is at the very top of the description below. I also have channel memberships for just 99 cents a month. So basically, I have used the 64% number right here, 64%, that's the amount of votes I would be giving for Donald Trump off of the 2020 election results. So let's say a state like uh, Michigan, if Donald Trump won 47.8%, if he won 64% of that number for his run as a third party candidate, the state of Michigan, he would win around 30% to Nikki Haley's 17%, and Joe Biden's numbers would stay the same. So you can quickly see why this map would just become so beneficial for the Democratic Party. So I would start off by giving Joe Biden all of his solid states. These are states that you would typically expect to be solid for Joe Biden, and these were all solid states for him in the 2020 presidential election. So Joe Biden should have absolutely no trouble winning any of these states that you see on your screen here. This would give Joe Biden 180 electoral votes. Um, following this, I want to give Joe Biden some more solid states. These are states that he won in 2020, and he would win pretty easily in this scenario, starting off with Nevada. So I'm only going to go over Nevada because the margins here have been pretty similar. So states that Joe Biden won by very small margins, you have Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, you know, all 1 to 3% margins, Nevada as well. So he won, you know, approximately 49 to 50% of the votes in these four states. Arizona, same thing, 49%, and Georgia, 49%. So all of these states, Trump won, I mean, 47, 48% around that. But if you really were to only give Trump 64% of the votes that he won, he would win 30 to 31% in all of these states. Every single one of these states, Colorado, New Mexico, Virginia, you know, even more. So basically, I would have to give all the likely Biden states from 2020 as solid states for Joe Biden. So Minnesota, Colorado, New Mexico, Virginia, as well as New Hampshire, and then the at-large vote there in Maine, they would all off the bat be solid. And, you know, this is really an interesting map, and it's going to be interesting to see which states Nikki Haley can actually win in this scenario. So for Joe Biden, I would also give him Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia all as solid states on this map. It's not a joke. Um, you can do the math yourself. 64% of a state like North Carolina that would give Donald Trump around 31% to Nikki Haley's 19%, and Joe Biden with 48%, it would easily be a solid margin for the President of the United States. So he would already have passed you know, his margin in 2020 and have easily passed 270 electoral votes. Now, it's really interesting to see which other states Joe Biden can actually win on this map. I was hot off with the state of Florida, 31 electoral votes. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Joe Biden's going to win this state, but it's just a margin right now. Um, Joe Biden won 48% around that in this state. Donald Trump, 51.2%. If you were to take um, that number of that 64% uh, of that 51%, you would get around 33% support for Donald Trump, 
which of course would mean that this state right here, the state of Florida, would be a likely Biden state. Uh, moving on to the state of Texas, things are not that much different here. 52% to 46. Trump would win 33% here again. Around that, this is all um, a very close estimate. And then Nikki Haley, 19%, which means that, of course, the state of Texas would flip for the first time since 1976. And this state would be a likely blue state, moving Joe Biden closer and closer to 400 electoral votes. I also do want to go over the state of Alaska. Three electoral votes. This state was a state that Joe Biden performed pretty well in in 2024. A Democrat, 52.8% to 42.8%. Exactly a 10% margin there in the state of Alaska. However, Joe Biden would win this state by a likely margin, of course, because Trump would win 33% to Nikki Haley's 19%. So that would mean the state of Alaska, a likely Biden state. Um, I want to go to the Rust Belt now, finishing off the Rust Belt, Iowa, Indiana, and Ohio, all going to be Biden state, starting off from left to right, the state of Iowa, Trump win 33%, Nikki Haley 20%, that would make the state of Iowa a likely state, as you can see, Joe Biden won by pretty similar margins in all three of these states, 53.1% uh, to 44, 53 to 45, and then 57, 41, so Indiana is the weakest one out of these three states. Next, the state of Ohio, 3320, basically the same thing. That would be another likely state for Joe Biden. And then in the state of Indiana, Biden did perform a little bit weaker here, only winning 41% of the vote, but Trump win 36% in this scenario. So that would be another lean state. This, is, this would be the first lean state for Joe Biden. I also do want to take a look at the state of South Carolina right there, 55 to 43. This would again be another lean Biden state, as of course Trump would win 35%, and Biden with 43% would actually be likely, so sorry about that, not lean. South Carolina would be a likely Biden state, putting him up at 435 electoral votes. He has already outperformed Clinton, outperformed Obama outperformed Carter, and basically outperformed every single president, Democratic president, since Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, we'll see if Biden can actually beat uh, Johnson in this scenario, who won, I believe, 486 electoral votes. But we are we have still quite a few states left for Joe Biden. So starting off, uh, I'm going to go with Kansas and Missouri. These would be the next states. State of Kansas and Missouri, same margins for both of these states. 56-41, 56-41, um, Biden won almost the exact same amount of votes in both of these states. So it would come out to be Biden at, of course, that 41%, and then you would have uh, Donald Trump with 36% to Nikki Haley's 20 So Kansas, Missouri, these would both be lean states, as the margin would be 41-36 for, for Biden and Trump in both of these two states. So this would break you know, the, you know, the, all the red that is in the middle of this country, Joe Biden flipping Kansas and Missouri. And you can, you know, you can go back and see when the last time it was that a Democrat had won Kansas or Missouri. I mean, the last time Missouri was won by a Democrat was Jimmy Carter, uh, in 19, yeah, in 1976. Kansas hasn't gone to a Democrat in a lot more than that. And a lot of you guys are asking what this website was. This is map.jacksonjude.com. Um, you can compare a lot of things. You can also see forecasts, um, you know, for, you know, 538 average or 538 projection. So there's a lot of things that you can see with this website. Again, it's map.jacksonjude.com. It's spelled exactly like you would think it's called. Um, so, yeah, this is a pretty nice website to see how the electoral map uh, changes over time, as you can see here on my screen. So the state of Kansas, that would be a Democratic state alongside Missouri. Uh, moving on to another blue state, let's go to the south, Louisiana and Mississippi. Yes, these states would both be lean, not tilt, but lean Democratic states. You have the state of Mississippi, it would come out to be 36% for Donald Trump, Louisiana 37% for Donald Trump, while Joe Biden w would win 41% and 39% which would put Joe Biden just over the top here in the states of Louisiana and Mississippi. He's now at 465 electoral votes, just 21 electoral votes left, and he will beat Johnson and would be the most successful Democrat since Franklin Roosevelt. 
Um, the final state, though, there actually, I believe, is only just a couple states left for Joe Biden, starting off with the state of Montana, another lean state for Joe Biden. This state is actually stronger for Biden than quite a few other states, but Biden won 40%. Trump won 56.9% last time. And then according to the math here, of course, Trump won 36% to Nikki Haley's 21%, making this a lean state for Joe Biden, winning the state by around 4 percentage points. So the state of Montana puts Joe Biden up at 469 electoral votes. Um, now, I do want to take a look at the states of Maine and Nebraska at this moment. Uh, the state of Maine, the second congressional district of the state of Maine, that would, of course, go to Joe Biden. It would be 33% for Donald Trump to 19% uh, for Nikki Haley. And then if you were to take a look at Joe Biden's numbers here, the second district of Maine, Biden would win 44%. And again, Trump won 33 So this would easily be an 11-point margin for Joe Biden. And what is most surprising is that Joe Biden would actually win the whole state of Nebraska with the exclusion of the third district, of course. So the Nebraska at-large vote, that would be 37% for Trump, 21% for Nikki Haley, and then here, of course, 39%. So the at-large vote for the state of Nebraska would be lean, while the first district around the state margin, that would also be lean, while the second congressional district, of course, a district that Joe Biden won in 2020, flipped it from 2016. This would be a Biden district by a pretty strong margin, a solid margin for, from the second congressional district. And then we have just one final Democratic state left, and that is the state of Utah. Six electoral votes, the home state of Mitt Romney. If you look at the numbers here, 58-36, uh, or actually 37.6%, but Donald Trump would win 37% here to uh, Nikki Haley's 21, and of course this was rounded, but even with the rounding, Joe Biden would very, very narrowly win, and that would be the only tilt state on this electoral map for Joe Biden, putting him up at 480 electoral votes, and this would mean Joe Biden would have the largest victory for a Democrat since Lyndon B. Johnson in 1964, and this would of course uh, be just six electoral votes shy of breaking that record, that record that has lasted for almost a century from Franklin D. Roosevelt for a Democrat. Of course, it was broken by Ronald Reagan, but for a Democrat, it is not. All right, so now we have these uh, final states. And again, you know, it'll be interesting to see which states Nikki Haley can actually win. So I'm going to start off, go from left to right, honestly. So starting off with the state of Idaho, 40% would vote for Trump, 23%. This, of course, is a pretty solid state. So 40% Trump, 23% Haley, Joe Biden, 33%. This would be a lean state, I believe, with the actual margins here. The state of Idaho, a lean state for Donald Trump. But the state of Wyoming would be solid, of course, the most Republican state. And so would the state of West Virginia, solid for Donald Trump. You can take a look at the margins margins there for yourself. Um, moving on from this, I do also want to take a look at the 3rd Congressional District of Nebraska. That would also be solid, the most uh, Republican body of voters, 75% voted for Donald Trump here. Now for the likely Trump states, the state of North Dakota would be likely. And so with the state of Oklahoma, if you look at the margins here, it's around 65-31, Oklahoma 65-32. And at the end of this, Oklahoma would win 42% for Donald Trump. The state of North Dakota would be a total of 42% again for Donald Trump and then 23 for Nikki Haley. So he would easily win these two states, although by a much more lackluster margin there. Um... The state of South Dakota would be only lean for Donald Trump, so a lean categorization for the state of South Dakota. You then have the state of Arkansas, that would be, again, another lean state, as well as the state of Alabama, so these two states all lean for Donald Trump. The state of Kentucky, another lean state, and then finally the state of Tennessee, it would be 60-37, but Trump would win 38%, so he would barely beat out Joe Biden there, making the state of Tennessee a tilt state for Donald Trump. So this is the 2024 presidential election map. Joe Biden, 480 electoral votes. Donald Trump, 58 electoral votes. Nikki Haley, the Republican, zero electoral votes. She did not come close to winning any state on this electoral map. 
and the only state that she came in second, Nikki Haley came in third in every single state. The only state that Nikki Haley did not come in third in, the only state that she came in second in, is the third congressional district of Nebraska. Because if you look at the numbers here, there's just too much Republican vote. Donald Trump would win out of that 75%. He would win 48%. The Republicans would win 27%. So 27% for Nikki Haley, and then that remaining 22% for Joe Biden. So, Biden only comes in third in one state, or one district, not even a state, and Donald Trump does not break 50% in any state. He wins a plurality in every single green state. Donald Trump cannot win a majority in any of these states, while Joe Biden destroys um, Donald Trump and Nikki Haley in this scenario. So, this is pretty interesting. Whether or not it's really going to happen, I think it's a little bit unlikely, but if you know the rift forms further between the establishment GOP and Donald Trump, this really could be a possible scenario for the 2024 presidential election. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like this video down below if you enjoyed it. Um, Join my Discord server if you have not. I just realized I did not even go to the link. So the link to my Discord is at the very top of the description below. I don't know why I'm showing you guys this. Um, also, do you have channel memberships? 99 cents a month. So subscribe to my channel if you have not. Comment down below um, if you think this is accurate. If you think Nikki Haley could actually win an electoral vote. And so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This is all based on the data here. And other polls have shown it's around 60 to 70% support for Trump. So this is not the only poll that shows uh, a majority of Republicans would support Trump. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.